그러면은 그 오늘은 이제 첫 번째 수업 내용으로서 이 컴퓨터 아키텍처라는 그런 분야가 어떤 분야인지 인트로덕터를 인트로덕션 그 내용을 좀 다루도록 하겠습니다. So now I will talk about what computer architecture is. So this is the some introductory uh, lecture for the, uh, the entire course. Okay. So let us remind the object of this course. The object of this course is exploring computer system architecture at an abstract level. So that means we will learn about computer systems hardware. Then what does computer systems mean? I believe most of you already know the object called a computer. This figure shows a first generation personal computer designed by IBM. It looks ugly. After some years, Apple made facial computer systems, and the same company designed more beautiful computer systems. These are the typical figures of computer systems. Oh, do you agree with me? Sometimes, a company called Apple designed weird-looking computers. But I believe most of computer engineering students want to buy them if affordable. By the way, most of us always use computer systems everywhere. Most of cellular phones are smartphones nowadays. That means every smartphone has general purpose processors or CPUs. So we can say that smartphones is a kind of computer systems. That is because a smartphone equipped processors which can run general purpose applications. How about smart watches and smart speakers? We can say that these are all computer systems. And recently, we are facing the different types of computer systems called domain-specific processors. These type of computer processors cannot run general purpose applications. On the other hand, these type of processors accelerate the execution of specific domain applications or software. For example, Google's TensorFlow processor unit can boost the performance of neural network operations. Intel also developed the FPGA-based accelerator processors. We use NVIDIA's graphics processing unit for better gaming systems but GPUs are more popular for running parallel applications. Computer systems also include these new types of processors. Computer systems also include gigantic infrastructure for bunch of operations. We are all familiar with cloud computing and data center. These are the gigantic computers. These photos show Google's data center. Data center include tons of computers connected to each other. And the size of one data center is equal to several soccer stadiums. We can say that the data center infrastructure is a kind of a computer system. In conclusion, computer systems include all the systems or processors that can run programs. And nowadays, most of electric devices run programs, and these devices are connected to data center or cloud infrastructures. So we can say that these all devices are computer systems, and we can say that computers are everywhere. Computer architecture studies hardware of computer systems and software for running computer systems. So, computer architecture is a very important research for understanding computer systems. Computer architecture research focuses on better computer systems. That means high performance and low cost computer systems. 
So, so I will summarize the, some uh, several classes of computers. So we can first think about the personal computers, what is called PC. These personal computers are designed firstly designed by IBM, and these personal computers are used for general purpose. And then that means that these PCs can run a uh, variable uh, <coughs> variety of software. And then this PC is designed for cost and performance. So that means that the designer of the, this personal computer, com personal computer system need to consider the trade of cost and performance. And then what about the server computers? These server computers are managed by uh, big companies like Google, Amazon, or some other, other companies, uh, and then some and a neighbor or down. So these server computers are network based. So that means that these computers are connected to the network, computer networks. It's called the internet. And then these server computers need to run a bunch of applications or need to manage the bunch of user requests. So this type of computers uh, support the high capacity and the high performance, and also it needs to support the reliable operations. So reliable operation means that the result of a computation needs to be correct in any cases. So actually, there are many type kind of server computers. So range from server small servers or building sized server computers. So I actually. I showed uh, some photo of a Google Data Center, and then this size of a Google Data Center is equivalent to the several uh, soccer stadiums. And how, how about, what about the supercomputers? And then, <coughs> also, our country, uh, Korea, also has the, some several supercomputers, and then these supercomputers is used for high-end scientific and engineering calculations. For example, the supercomputer in Korea is used for forecasting the weather. So this type of supercomputer is very similar to the uh, server computers. So that means that the supercomputers support the high performance operations. So that means it has highest capability. But as you can see, as you, as you as you know, these supercomputers, there are <coughs> there are small number small number of supercomputers in the worldwide. So that means that in the computer market, this fraction of the supercomputer is very small. And then embedded computers. So what is the embedded system? This embedded computers is equipped in the embedded system. And embedded system means that it's the, some specific purpose system or specific purpose electric devices. So what is the specific purpose? It is such, uh, for example, the specific purpose includes uh, some cellular phone, or smart watch, or smart speakers, or even the refrigerator, or washing machine, or <laughs> some other type of devices. So this type of devices has the specific purpose. And then these computer processors hidden as a component of the system. But this type of computer processors also run general purpose applications. That means that it runs programs. But this program is designed for specific purpose of the devices. So this type of computer processor is very critical for performance and cost constraint. So for example, the smart, uh, some embedded processor equipped in the smartphones. So what's the critical uh, constraint for the, this smartphone? Power and energy, because this smartphone is, uh, the power source of the, this smartphone is the battery. There's limited power sources. So the, this processor need to run on the low power board. So before diving into study of computer architecture, 
I will give several questions related to this control architecture field. So now you are looking at uh, two different computer processors. The left processor is the Intel Pentium 4 working at 1.3 GHz clock frequency. The right side processor is Raspberry Pi's ARM processor working at 1.2 GHz frequency. Can you tell which processor is better? The so better means that has a higher performance. So most of the people say that if a processor is working at higher clock frequency, that processor that processor is faster, and then that processor supports the higher performance. So is this is it true for this case? Is, this case? And then you must answer after taking this course. Then let's compare two different processors made by the same CPU manufacturer, Intel. The left side processor is Intel Xeon, and then right side right side processor is Intel i7 family. So which processor is better? And then which processor is more expensive? So do you know the reason why some type of processor is better? more expensive than some other types of processors? <laughs> you need to answer after this course. So now, how about this case? Let's compare Intel Xeon processor and NVIDIA Tesla. Actually, the NVIDIA Tesla is a graphics processing unit, that means GPU. So which processor is better? So actually, Intel Xeon is a server processor. That means the server system you keep you know, use deploy this Intel processor as the as a CPU. And how about NVIDIA Tesla? NVIDIA Tesla is a GPU. So that means that the computer system, uh, the GPUs cannot run operating system of the, the computer system. So GPU is just the core processor. So can you compare the performance of these two different type of processors? And is it fair to compare the performance? How can we answer? So these are those, so these questions are related to computer architecture research or computer architecture study. So, so actually until now I talk talked about the performance of computer system or performance comparison of different types of computer processors. So, so what determines the performance of computer system? So these are some factors of performance of a computer system. So you can think, you can think that the performance of, of performance of a computer system is determined by the capability of a computer system hardware. So that's true by half, not entirely true. So we need to think about the, some how the computer hardware runs the computer software. Actually, if we uh, think about the computer system, that means that this computer system needs to run the user software or some applications. And then this type of applications also decide the performance of entire computer system. So we need to, so when we uh, think about the performance of computer system, then we need to consider both software and hardware aspect. Then, <clears throat> then what factors decide the performance of computer system? The first factor is algorithm. So algorithm determines the number of operations executed in the you know, software or applications. So it's a better algorithm can run faster. And then program language, compiler, and architect. Architect means the, the instruction set architecture. So these program language and compiler and architecture determine number of machine instructions executed per operation. So for example, the same type of application can be written in C or Python. And 
yeah so so <clears throat> and then if, if the uh, same program is written in the C then it can be faster not always faster but it can be faster how about the compiler so we can uh, set a different option for compi so compilation so different different option means that it's a different performance so if we use the, some error option then the compiled program can run faster how about the architecture so the same program okay okay the same uh, code can be compiled for intel x86 instruction set architecture or the same program can be compiled for arm processor arm architecture so the same program the code is the same but compiled different because the architecture is different then performance can be different because if the same program to compile to the machine language this compiled code can be contain the different number of machine instructions so this is some software aspect to determine the uh, the performance of computer systems and how about the hardware the hardware factor is the processor and memory system this is some hardware of the computer system also the better processor or better memory system uh, support the uh, higher performance so this hardware of the computer system determines how fast instructions are executed so for example if the computer runs at uh, one, one gigahertz and then this and then the other computer system runs at two gigahertz clock rate so that means so if the other vectors are the same then two gigahertz computer system can run faster how about the memory system if the computer system uh, <coughs> uh, if the comp computer system include equip the uh, uh, much uh, more DRAM uh, that means that the higher DRAM uh, capacity and this type of computer system can run faster because the memory system also critical for the performance of a computer system and the IO system including the operating system so this IO system determines how fast the, how fast IO operations are executed then so what is the IO execution IO operations so some input and output of the computer system or some that it includes the network or some communication between the storage or some other computer system so these are the, some common some uh, uh, representative factors that determines the performance of a computer system. So why do we need to learn computer architecture? So now I will summarize why we need to study computer architecture and this course. So taking this computer architecture course is a basic step to understand the computer system hardware and some level of software, system software. And computer architecture research is essential for building better computer system. And I already said that better computer systems mean high performance and low cost computer systems. Uh, we may expect that computer architecture is only necessary for a uh, computer hardware engineer, but that's not true. It is required for making better software. And recently, more domain-specific processors such as GPUs or TPUs are deployed in common computer systems. So architectural knowledge is essential for programming such kind of applications, for example, um, CUDA programming or um, uh, some TPU programming. So, so in, con in conclusion, this course is very important, and then even your uh, uh, you, your goal is to be, become uh, some uh, good software engineer. Then, you, but you need to understand how computer system works and the computer hardware works. So, what you will learn this course, I will, and then in this course you will learn how programs are translated into 
machine language. So machine language is GKR. So and then how this your code, some your code is uh, means the actually high level language because this uh, program language is very similar to our normal language like uh, English. <laughs> so, so in this course, we will learn how this high level language can be translated into the machine language and then how this translation is determined by the instruction set architecture. And then also we will learn how this computer hardware execute the machine language, translated machine language. And then also we will cover the hardware software interface. So that means actually the computer architecture is computer architecture area is located between some pure software and some hardware. So actually the architecture means the some interface between this hardware and software. And then we will learn what determines program performance and then how it can be improved. It's so important because this computer architecture research, the aim of the computer architecture research is to build the better computer system. That means higher performance and lower cost. And then we will learn how hardware designers, how they are com architecture, computer architect, architect improve the performance of the system. And then what we will learn what is parallel processing of the modern computer systems. So that's so some introduction of the, this course. And I recommend you to memor uh, you to you to memorize the, this some um, uh, introduction of the, this course, that's all of the, this course. And then if your goal is clear, then you can run better. You can get knowledge more easily and then more efficiently from this course. Okay, uh, I will stop here. And then, so, I, so as a first day of the some this online teaching, I will stop here. And then for the next class, I will uh, teach about uh, some abstraction and then some more some introductor, introduction of the computer systems. Um, if you have any questions, then you can post your questions on the Piazza or Blackboard anytime. Uh, unfortunately, we can uh, I cannot provide the teaching on the offline, but I, I recorded this is uh, my teaching, and then <clears throat> I will upload the, this this video on the YouTube, and you can watch the, this recorded video. But if you have any questions, and then post your question on the Piazza and Blackboard, and then I will answer as soon as possible. Yeah, 그래서 이제 그 uh, and then uh, 이제 채점 여기서 마치고요. 그다음에 이제 뭐 아주 간단한 서비를 제가 이제 블랙보드에 이제 올리도록 하겠습니다. 그래서 이제 그 서비에 대해서 뭐 그냥 어, 이 서비 서비에 대해서 이제 어, 답변을 PDF로 뭐그 워드나 이제 뭐 HWP로 작성한 다음에 PDF로 작성해 만들어서 그 숙제 어사인먼트에 이제 올려주면 되고요. 뭐 그건 이제 제가 이제 블랙보드에 이제 올리도록 하겠습니다. So <웃음> I will post the, the first first assignment. Actually, this is not an uh, assignment, but so that means that the score will not the points will not be assigned for this assignment. But I will post uh, some surveys or from surveys and then very very simple questions and then so some like uh, so what is your goal and then what. What do you think about this course? So something like I I will uh, make the, some questions like that. And then actually this is the, some training for the, some blackboard blackboard uh, system. So if you need to uh, submit the, your uh, result with the PDF format, so you can um, uh, generate the document with the Microsoft Word or HWP. But you need to save your document as the PDF format, and then 
submit your final result or final document on the Blackboard. It's uh, some training for the assignment. So, okay, so I will post the, the first assignment. Actually, there is a survey. It is simple assignment on the Blackboard, and then please submit your answers on the Blackboard system. Okay, so that's so the.